Hello and welcome to another edition of The Lightest and Best from House of Wisdom, where we look at the lightest and best offerings from a variety of manufacturers. Today we're going to be looking at Boker Plus's A2 Mini. The A2 Mini is a Boker iteration of the Andre Thorburn Andre Von Eerden A1. The A1 has a blade length of 3 and 3 quarters inches long. Boker made two iterations of its uh, copy of this or imitation of this. The A2, which has a blade length of 3.625, and the A2 Mini, which is what we're looking at today, which has a smaller blade length of 2.89 inches. Mass Drop currently has a drop on this for only $90, and if you include their $3.50 shipping for the lower 40 48 uh, you consider that the Blade HQ sells it for $101, so you're going to be saving $7.5 or 7.5% on this. So if you've been thinking about it, now may be a good time you can save a few dollars. The drop ends July 27th, and shipment of the knife is scheduled for August 16th, so you'll be saving $7.5 if you get it through Mass Drop, uh, if you don't mind waiting that three weeks. We'll talk about the specifications of the blade. The blade length, as I've mentioned, is 2.89 inches. The handle length, which is made out of G10, is 4 inches, giving a total knife length of 6.71 inches. The weight of the knife is 2.3 ounces. I have some other knives for comparison. We have the Spider Codelica, which is a little larger in the handle than this knife. We have the a squared uh, Andre Thorburn Andre von Heerden A5, which is approximately the same length as this knife. We have the Kershaw Skyline, which is a little larger than this knife. We have the Benchmade Mini Griptilian, which is pretty much the same size as this knife. And we have the Trevor Burger. EXK, which is a front flipper also, which is a little smaller than this knife. The blade on the knife is a satin finished VG10 and has a high hollow ground with a top swedge. There is jimping on the uh, posterior spine that is similar to the Thorburn Van Heerden jimping, which is little squares and you can run your finger over the top of it and it's smooth but when you press down it grips your finger and I want to show you the similarities to the A5 you see how the jimping has that similar pattern and this is nice because it really feels good whenever you run your finger over it but the minute you bear down it, your skin enters those squares and it really grips you and I want to just compare this with normal jimping here is the Delica, for example, and you can see it's like little spikes coming up. And anytime those spikes are kind of poking on you, and these don't poke on you until you want them to poke on you, basically. Interesting jimping. On this knife, I want to point out that there is no sharpening ricasso. And with the other Thorburns, they did put a sharpening ricasso. So it's thin all the way to the edge. Whereas the Boker Plus cut a little corner and it has this little triangular thing. Now, of course, you can cut all the way to the plunge grind, but uh, after that, you have a little triangular thing there that's getting in your way. The method of deployment is front flipper. And for those of you who haven't uh, had experience with the South African front flippers, basically you hold it with between your thumb and your third finger, and your second finger comes up to grab the jimping, and you just flip like that. On some of the knives, you have a lower opening option. On this one, you can't because the jimping doesn't extend. If you do it quickly, you can get it up, but basically it's easiest to do with your second finger reaching over the top. I have here a Trevor Burger knife that's also a South African front flipper. The flipper placement is different. I call this a high front flipper and this a low front flipper. With the Trevor Burger, if you hold it like that, you really can't get your finger over there to open it very well. So it's better opened with the thumb. You can do a slow roll or you can roll it fast, but that's the way you open the Trevor Burger uh, knife. With this one, it's easier to open it there. However, if you wanted to do it from the bottom, you could do it if you flick your thumb quickly. 
The handle on the knife is made of G10 and has these oblique milling that gives you good traction. I want to point out too, they milled a faux uh, pivot collar on both sides. It's made of G10, so it's not a real pivot collar, but it has the look of a pivot collar. I thought it was kind of cute. And it has a full G10 backspacer with the gear pattern. Note also that they have this titanium liners that are blue anodized that gives a nice little pop of color. The pivot runs on caged bearings in a race and as I've mentioned has this faux pivot collar. The lock on the knife is by liner lock as you can tell on this one it has a little over 50 percent and you can release it like that and it releases well. I want to point out though that there is no cutout of the show side so that it makes it a little easier to get your finger in there so you can but you have to kind of jam it down into that groove to grab the liner. On all the other Thorburn knives I have they have a cutout I just want to show you the A squared A5 you can see a little cutout so when you go to unlock the liner lock it's really easy to do. I have a couple of others I want to show you. This is of the A squared series 2. This is the M45 which is a relative new one. You see the show side is cut out a little bit so whenever you go to unlock the liner it's a little bit easier. And then this is not an A2 it's just a Thorburn but that's the same idea. The show side is cut out a little lower so it's a little easy to sweep your thumb across and unlock the knife. This knife is a little harder. It's very easy to unlock it, but sometimes you can slip and you got to jam your thumb down in there. It's a, it's a little bit more difficult. The pocket clip on the knife is a G10 clip. It has five holes in it just for aesthetic purposes and function very nicely. It's right hand tip up carry only. The ergonomics on the knife are good. You have milled out areas for your uh, second and third finger and then the others follow suit. It's a four inch handle so uh, most men can get their hand on that. And we'll talk about the action. It flips out easy with the front, front flipper and it's not a false shut on its own knife. You want to push it shut or you can shake it shut also but it's not a free falling knife. We'll talk about the value of the knife. This with shipping from the mass drop is $93.50 as opposed to its normal price of $101, so you save a little bit of money. Here is my opinion of what its big competition is. This is the Spider Code Delica, and it goes uh, Knife Center now for about $99. So it's in that sub between $90 and $100 range. This one has the ZDP 189, so it's a super steel, and it has the same idea that uh, because it's a front flipper, you don't have that flipper in the way catching your keys on it. It is a little bit wider, as you can tell. This one fits in the pocket a little bit sleeker than the Delica, but you get a VG10 steel with the Boker Plus um, knife, and then with the Delica, you get a super steel uh, ZDP 189. So for the steel snobs, that's going to be a hard sell. The other competition I think it has is this, the Mini Griptilian. This is the black blade, but with the uncoated blade, you can get it for the exact same price, uh, $93.50, and it has that nice axis lock that just the blade free falls, and it's a lot of fun to play with. So that's another competition I perceive. Those who still want to try out that African front flipper thing, it's a barrel of monkeys, and and that's a lot of fun, but I think that these are two knives in the same price category that would really give it a run for the money. So what are my impressions about the Boker Plus A squared? I really like it for what it is. Are there opportunities for improvement? Certainly. For example, I've mentioned, I think that they should have done a small cutout on the show side so that it's easier to unlock the knife, just like the real a squared and this is the A5. It has a cutoff so it's easy to disengage. The handle is grippy but it also feels a little bit cheap with the G10. I don't know how to fix that. And there's no sharpening ricasso. Note that on the real A squareds they put a sharpening ricasso so the blade looks a lot neater and trimmer. It avoids this triangular part when you extend the grind beyond the plunge grind. But what do I like about it? 
I like the South African front flipper style. It works well, it flips out great, and it's a way to see what a front flipper is like if you're thinking about investing in the real A squared from Andre Thorburn and Andre von Heerden. Front flippers have no flipper tab and therefore take up less space in your pants. I'm gonna be just showing you this one with the A5. If you have this in your pants, Put your keys in, it can hang up on that flipper tab, and some guys don't like that. So this design would be positive for you if you if you had a problem with that. I also like the price of the Boker Plus A2. It's inexpensive. It comes in less than $100. The real A squareds cost around seven to $800. And I like it because it's light. It only weighs 2.3 ounces, and it's a lot of nice for that kind of price. So who would this knife be ideal for? I think the guy who wants to try out the South African style flipping action before laying down several hundred dollars for the real thing would be a good match. And then the value buyer. The guy that doesn't mind the blade made out of VG10 or the G10 handles, he thinks that that's okay, but you still want the front flipper. I think that that would be a good match. And then the guy that... that understands what this knife has to offer. A very lightweight, 2.3 ounces, the front flipper design, and a very good value. Well, in the comments section, let me, think, let me know about what you think about the knife, and leave your comments. Also, like and subscribe, and that's it for the latest, lightest and best video from House of Wisdom. See you on the next video.